What's a budget cycle? Sometimes this question is the difference between someone making a sale or not making a sale. Uh, understanding the budget cycle. The budget cycle, all of you have probably done budgets for either businesses or for your own household personally, so I don't need to spend too much time explaining it. But it essentially answers the question, uh, when do businesses or households make purchasing decisions? And how does that process work? And over what period of time? So everybody, uh, most businesses and most households have a budget or a budget process. Um, it doesn't mean they don't violate that. It means that they go through a rudimentary planning process that they say, over the next period of time, quarter, year, month, this is how much money I have to spend, and these are the things that I'm going to try and spend it on. And they try and set limits or parameters to guide their uh, spending behavior. The reason that's important is because um, from a company perspective, a lot of companies work on um, different uh, calendar schedules, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, so it's important to understand when those decisions get made and how the planning gets done. Uh, same thing as households, there are different decision makers, they make major purchasing decisions at different times during the year. So if you're targeting those folks, it's important to understand uh, what the budget cycle is. So here are some key questions in understanding budget cycles. Uh, what is the calendar cycle? What, you know, what time of year does this happen and over what period of time? Who are the key decision makers? Who makes the purchase or the purchase decision or whose permission do you need to make a purchase decision? How much can be spent uh, and can that be violated? Uh, the when does the actual budgeting take place, meaning not the period of time over which you're spending the money, but when are you making the decisions about how much to spend? And how much cushion or flexibility are there in the, in the rules processes? Um, does that mean you can violate those things or you can never violate them? Uh, that's important. And then what alternatives exist if you indeed do need to uh, cross some of the budgeting rules or the budget cycle rules? Uh, can you change pricing? Can you change terms? Whose permission do you need? Etc. Um, so let's look at a couple examples. We'll look at a consumer product and a, a business sale, a, you know, a business product. So uh, from a consumer perspective, your budgeting cycle may look like this. You may have a month that you're budgeting for, and you get two paychecks. You get one on the 5th and one on the 20th. So uh, your purchasing decisions may happen, you know, you may pay rent here, your mortgage, um, you may make other purchasing decisions here, you've got a certain amount of dollars for those decisions. So like, it's not necessarily a calendar cycle, meaning a calendar year in this place, it might take place over a month. Uh, so if you're targeting those folks with advertising, um, first of all, what product are you selling and who are the key decision makers? Uh, you know, there's pretty good data about moms versus dads. Uh, who makes those purchasing decisions, children, uh, what, what, how they spend money and on what, um, how much can be spent. Again, in your product family, you'd be asking the question, um, is this a once annual, is it a big ticket item, is it a small, uh, you know, like a Diet Coke or a cup of coffee. Uh, that has a lot to do with um, how much and how often they can spend it. And then when does this budgeting take place? It's important to understand that they may have actually had this discussion months ago about what they can spend in January, February, March, April. Um, so if you're really going to influence that process, you're really going to have to be present when that discussion is taking place. That's easier to understand with the business sale, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but then how much cushion or flexibility around your product? Again, big ticket, small ticket. Um, with consumers, it's a little harder to establish. And what alternatives exist? Uh, can they pay for it over time? Can they put it on a credit card? Can they uh, do, you, do you have a layaway process? Those are all things designed to get around uh, the, the objections around budgeting, that, you know, about budget cycles. Hey, I don't have any money until next year, until next month. Um, so let's look at the business sale. It's a little easier to sort of explain these things in terms of the business sale. So um, businesses are often using annual budgets, right? So they'll do for fiscal year 2010, they'll budget. And let's say the fiscal year ends in December 31st and starts January 1st. So there's your budget cycle. This is when they can spend that money, starting January 1st and ending December 31st. However, that's different than uh, when does the budgeting take place. Often those, these guys are making these decisions in October of the year prior. So if you haven't started talking to them and you're not into your sales cycle and you're not showing them your sales collateral and explaining your pricing, you're almost doomed that they're never gonna spend a big amount of money on your product here unless they plan for it in October. Uh, so lots of salespeople can't figure out why they can't make the sale and why they've got to wait an additional year. Uh, and it all has to do with budget cycle, with understanding the budget cycle. Also, 
in the in business who are the decision makers you may your key contact may be uh, you know the VP but the decision maker is going to be the CEO and you may not know that because you're going to have to ask the question how much can be spent uh, and by whom uh, a lot of times companies are loath to really answer that question or they think they have more power than they do the VPs or, or the purchasing manager will and they'll need permission over a certain amount uh, that has to do with your budget cycles as well so find out whether they need permission over a certain amount to buy your product um, same thing really goes for consumers you can you know does the husband or wife need permission to go spend thousands of dollars on some product it's pretty much the same question uh, and then also, how much cushion or flexibility is there? You can ask questions around that product. Well, what if we change pricing? Or what if you paid next year? Or what have you? I, I've, I've seen this happen both ways, where you've got fiscal year 2010 and fiscal year 2009. And I've had times where I'm selling software, and they've got extra money in the 09 budget, and they want to spend it. So they'll purposely pay me up front in December of 09, which is sort of counterintuitive, uh, because then they don't have to put it in 2010's budget. And I've had it the other way, where we'll, we'll install the software and let them use it for a couple months, and then they'll write me a big check in January because they've got the money in their budget. So th those are the questions you're going to be asking uh, around budget cycle. You know, what, what is the calendar cycle? When do you make these decisions? When does the planning actually occur around that decision, not just the calendar uh, cycle itself? Who makes the decisions? How much can they spend? Can they violate those things? And what are the alternatives I can use with my pricing or my terms or my permissioning to get around uh, some of those potential budgeting objections. So budget cycle, important concept to understand. Um, you'll know why you're losing a sale if you understand this.